Welcome back to the channel, you guys. In today's episode, we're gonna be installing some powered running boards on our 2024 F-150 Tremor. Now, our friends over at Boost Auto has sent us a set of their M2 Loomis steps for the F-150. I'm very excited to get these installed in the truck because they have a lot of neat features, not just the power folding running boards like you see on a lot of the other trucks, they have a lot of neat features such as their sequential turn signals, their rock lights, and their daytime running lights that are built into the running boards themselves. So these aren't just your typical, typical bolt on running boards. There's a lot of really neat features, a lot of wiring involved. So let's get right into it, you guys. Let's start with the unboxing and we'll see what we're dealing with. So these are the boxes that Boost Auto has sent over to us. I'm guessing that these ones include the running boards, the long one there, and those are the motors for the running boards. And then one of these boxes will have the harnesses as well. So we'll get started with the long one right off the bat here. Let's pull out the running boards and see what we got here. All right, so here's some of our wiring harnesses. And these are the running boards. They look amazing. So when you purchase this on Boost Auto's website, you can kit, kit these out however you want to. You can get, uh, you can just opt not to have the stomp pads on. I don't know what you want to call them, grip pads, stomp pads, anything like that. You don't have to option for this. You can just get like in the background there. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but you can get just your normal running board style. Uh, I obviously opted for these. because I think they look deadly. And there's a bunch of different patterns and colors you can get. You can do gray, red, and blue, as well as uh, these triangles, circles, I believe, and hexagons. Uh, so a couple different designs they got going on, and these look just great. They, this, this color, this gray, should match the truck quite well. So very, very excited about that. And this kind of material here is like a really rigid, uh, it's, a, it's like a foam that you'd find on the back of like a wakeboarding boat. Um, it seems to be very, very durable. It should hold up quite well without chipping or kind of breaking off uh, over time. We also have some wiring harnesses, the koozie, uh, another wiring harness, and then some stickers or decals, decals, whatever you want to call them. Let's see what this box has to offer. So these are the motors that are included with the kit. Um, pretty robust. They look pretty robust right off the bat. Uh, looks like everything's powder coated, so you don't have to worry about uh, rusting or any of that kind of stuff. And they just feel really robust and really solid. First place we are going to start is on the old running boards or the OEM running boards. We're going to get these taken off. Very, very easy to do. Um, this should be obviously the easiest part of the install process. So let's come right underneath the truck here. And then you have your three brackets, um, your three bolts, sorry, mounted to your bracket. One here, here, and here. So we're going to zip these all off. Looks like maybe it's a half inch uh, nut. We'll confirm that in a second. Then obviously coming over to this side here, uh, we got the same thing. Three bolts, and then it'll be the same for the passenger side. So very, very easy to get those OEM running boards off. And then we will go ahead and start assembling all this kind of stuff. So they have markings on all these here. This one says rear. And then this one says passenger front. This one will probably say driver front, I'm guessing. Right there. And then this one's rear as well. So obviously the rear brackets, these, this bracket here and this bracket here are universal. So it doesn't matter what side of the vehicle you put them on as long as they're on the rear. Driver front, passenger front. And then uh, these should be very easy itself to mount up. It'll utilize the same, the same three bolts we're about to take off from factory. So it's gonna be a 13 mil socket to get these guys off here. All right, so that's done. Let's move on to the other side here. So for anyone wanting to know what the truck looks like without running boards, there you go. There's a little picture for you if that's something that you want to do. All right, so we're going to start off with the actual motor on the driver front. So we just line up, simply line them up like that. And we're not going to tighten anything down yet. We're going to get it all kind of snug, but loose. 
And then once we get our running board on and we kind of see how everything's seated, then we'll do the final uh, tightening, tightening up. So there's our motor installed, and then we'll go ahead and we'll work on the rear part. So we put this on the same way as we did our motor. Right, so we can't put the running board on just yet. I got a little ahead of myself. We need to do all the wiring so that we can have this guy um, basically come out just like that arm is over there. Then once this arm is deployed, then we can mount the running board. Uh, so wiring will be our next step in getting power to these motors. So on these motors here, where are you? Right there, there's a gray harness right here. Keep this in mind. Uh, I'm going to be discussing right away all the wiring and make it simpler for you guys. Just to make things a little bit more clear, since I did skip a few things, is they do include the hardware for mounting these brackets here. I went ahead and I used the OEM nuts after I took off those guys there, but they do include the hardware here. So I'm going to take off the OEM nuts I had on originally, and then I'm going to go put these guys on the washer and then the nut on top and then everything will be as it should be. And obviously it probably isn't an issue using the OEM stuff, the OEM hardware, but let's just use the supplied hardware that they give us to make things a little bit easier. So I'm not gonna obviously film that, as you guys understand, we already put the OEM nuts on, you understand how that process works, but regardless, this needs to kinda go on. These come with the package, and this holds our uh, running board onto onto the actual bracket itself. We'll obviously go over that later. All right, this will allow me to explain it a lot easier. So, you got your two headlights. These are my 2018 headlights from my last truck, but these will work for demonstration purposes. And you have your battery right here. You have your control relay for your motors. This, you're gonna wanna mount somewhere near your battery. For demonstration, we'll just put it on top of the battery for now. So, this guy is gonna plug right into here, right into this control relay, right? That's gonna be mounted somewhere near your battery. Then you're gonna have these two wires here. This is your positive, and this is your negative. This is gonna go to the negative on your battery, right? And this is gonna go to the positive on your battery. It does come with an inline fuse so that this is all protected. Now coming at to the end of the harness here, you're gonna have these gray plugs, these gray um, adapters that will tie into what I showed you guys a moment ago, right there. And you got one on each side, your passenger and your driver. So one of these are gonna have to get routed on your driver's side, which it does say. So this is passenger side. And then this one here is your driver's side. So you're gonna have to go to your driver's side with this one, your passenger side with this one. This extra wire here get routed into your engine bay, uh, through your engine bay, and then down through here on your driver's side and into your cab of your truck. And we will be tying it somewhere down underneath here and we'll go over that when we get to that point. So that is it for this main harness right here. Your two motors and your uh, signal input to basically tell your motors when to turn, when to deploy and when to, re when to retract the running boards. We have two more harnesses that you'll receive in your package and then each one of these goes to a separate running board and then on, we'll start with the driver's side. So on your driver's side, and these are the specific wires for like, these need to be, this needs to be your driver side harness that needs to be your passenger side harness. The passenger side has the terminals that connect to your battery. So that's important. You're gonna wanna keep the, whatever wiring harness has the battery terminals, this will be the passenger side. When you get this cable ran back to your engine or into your engine bay, you're gonna have a harness that's gonna plug into your headlights or some form of harness. They're all gonna look differently depending on your year, your model, all that kind of stuff. But you're gonna plug it into your headlights and then you're gonna basically plug this guy into here. On the same harness, right, this is just teed off here, you have this guy here. This you'll have to route back through your engine bay, even though there's not a lot of cable in this, but I think we'll obviously have enough. You have to route this back to your passenger side. And it's very important because this gets connected to this guy right here, like so. And you also have 
So like this harness is built the same, same idea. You plug, you, you know, you're gonna have your OEM harness, you're gonna pull your OEM harness on, you're gonna plug this guy into your headlight, plug your OEM harness into the back of this guy now, and then this guy here is gonna get attached to this guy here, just like so. That is how you're, we're gonna do all the wiring on the truck. The hardest part is fishing everything, getting it to where it needs to go, and that will be the next part. But I wanted to kind of go over all this and just show you guys kind of how you can at least follow this idea and how everything's supposed to be because once you have everything routed, it's hard to maybe wrap your head around it and understand how it's all supposed to work. So very, very simple. It looks overwhelming because there is a lot of wires, but very, very simple in the grand scheme of things. I already got these brackets put up on this side as well. I didn't need to explain this to you guys. It's three bolts, it's very, very simple. Um, but I haven't ran a stitch of wiring yet. So the first place that we're gonna start when doing that is we are going to, first off, you're gonna wanna peel off your wheel well liner. Clip back here that you wanna pull off, just so that there's a little bit, it's a little loose back here so you can run your cable down. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and take the front of your, um, your basically your, your mud guard off so that your, or your wheel well liner, so you can get in the back, back access to the back of your headlights here. And the next step will be to run a wire. I have a, a metal fish tape. You can use a coat hanger or any piece of metal wire. You're gonna want to run it down. So I have mine running down in behind the fuse box here. And I pushed it down underneath the truck. And I have it coming out right here. All right, so you grab your two wires that we're gonna push down there. We got our passenger wire for the motor. And then we got our wire for our running board lights. Just simply tape it on. Don't have to do anything too, too crazy. Kind of taped up in a bundle like that. And then we're gonna start shoving it down there. And if I had two people, which I never do, someone could be pulling it from underneath while I slowly feed it up here. Um, but I should be able to get this done regardless. So I'm gonna go underneath the truck now and I'll pull the rest of this through. There we go. So here is our wires right here. And we don't need to run them too, too far because our connections are gonna be right up front here. And obviously, like I showed you earlier, this guy right here, now that we have it here. So here's our motor connection right here. And then these guys will fit right in. Like that. And then we got our wire right here for our running board when the time does come. So these two cables here, we're gonna get routed to the driver's side because one of them is for our driver's side motor right here. And the other one is this, this little double wire I was telling you about that goes inside the truck, which we're gonna wanna get through the boot on the driver's side. So I think I'm gonna take this bonnet off so I can route my cables underneath nicely and they're not just showing in my engine bay. You can do whatever you're comfortable with doing. If you want to run them across your engine bay another me in another way, um, you can go ahead because there's no really, you know, right or wrong way of doing it. I mean, I guess there is in a sense, but I like just to have everything looking clean as possible. So there's just a couple of clips here that you just gotta pry off. All right, so we got that off. All right, so what I ended up doing was I ended up routing them. Here's the two cables that go to the driver's side and I ended up routing them underneath this back lip here. So I zip tied it. I got blue zip ties. These are um, Thomas and Betts. These are like really high quality. So they're not gonna break or weather over with heat and stuff like that. So I know they're not black, but you won't see them anyways once the bonnet's back on. And uh, I have them running underneath this lip here. So it's away from the rad. So they come down through here and then into the engine bay. They run on the back side here, underneath the intake, and then they're currently just hanging out right here. So again, we're taking our gray harness for our motor and our two, or our wire for our running board lights. We're gonna tape it on here. Ta-da! Then all we're left with is our wire here that gets put back to our passenger side. And then our wire right here that gets sent down to our headlight. And obviously this guy here that gets pushed into our interior, but we'll do that in a little bit. 
All right, so we got the one wire. It's gonna get dropped down to our headlight here. So we're just gonna drop that down for now, kind of half-assed. And then there's this wire here with the white end that's gonna get back, pushed back through to the driver's side. Plug right into it, like so. Boom. So we'll dress that all up eventually nicely once we get it all connected to the battery. We got our headlight harness here for our driver's side. And if we look down here, we might be able to see. We have a hard time finding it here, but I can feel the OEM lighting harness here. So I'm gonna pull it out of the headlight because I got it in my hand right now. And there it is right here, just like that. We are now gonna plug this guy in right here, just like so. And then this guy here is gonna plug into the back of the headlight. This wire here that we threw in the engine bay a minute ago has to plug into this little, this little tail here coming off that harness. So that's plugged in now. And now we can go ahead, we can plug this into the back of our headlight. And there's a little red pin on these things right here. Once you get this harness clipped in, you just gotta push this pin down to lock it. If you're not as familiar and you need to actually visualize it, then you can go through the back of the wheel well liner. So there, it clicked in, and I locked the red pin in. So we can't forget about this. This is the last thing we'll do though, is putting this wire into the, uh, into the cab. Coming back to this side, we need to do the same thing with this headlight here. We need to attach this to the headlight, and then we need to drop this guy down there, just like the other one, and attach this to our harness, our tail right here. Um, there, so that's it like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the driver's side. We're gonna grab our harness here. Go ahead and we're gonna plug it in. Okay, so I got the wire dropped down from the engine bay. It's, there's a lot of room, you just simply drop it down and you'll find it behind your wheel well liner here. So we are gonna plug this into this tail here. Actually, we'll tape this up really quickly like we did the other side, because we're not using this white wire here. So now that we got that taped up, we'll go ahead and we'll just plug it right in here. This back in here. We'll push this red pin just like that. We're gonna connect this guy now. To find a place to kind of hide this eventually. So a lot of wires here we have to we have to hide. So let's go back to this guy here and uh, get this ran into the engine bay and tied where they need to be tied. Then we can go ahead and we can power up the running boards, deploy those arms and get the running boards mounted. There is a boot underneath here, which I will show you in a second. This guy right here. So we're gonna stick our fish tape through here and we'll try to find it in the uh, engine bay here. Pull somewhere in this grommet here. Obviously not, not damaging any of the other cables, like so. Get out like that. So I just felt myself go through the other side into the engine bay and then I try to work this a little bit just to get a little bit looser. Whether this is the right way to penetrate the firewall or get your wires in here, I'm not too sure. So someone let me know if there's a more efficient way. But I've never had any issues doing it this way, so we will, for the sake of the video, do it as such. All right, so our fish tape is right here. Let's see if I can grab it here. All right, so there it is. There's a sharp little tip I put on it to penetrate the wall. So I can make like a hook to hook our wire onto. So the wire hit the wall and then we'll just gently work it through by just wiggling it and putting a little bit of tension on it. Oh, there comes our, our wad of tape. There we go, okay. So that was fairly easy. So if you're coming in here and you look underneath here, there's a wiring harness right, this guy right here. So we'll be removing this guy here, right there, and we will be tapping into this guy. This is our high and our low signal input. The white and orange is our high and the yellow and orange is our low. So we're gonna tap them in onto our harness here. And if you're looking at the harness, like on the top here, like this way here. Here, your green and your white here, which are gonna be pin six and pin seven. From the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So six and seven are green and white, and that's what we're gonna attach our, uh, 
our highs and lows to. Our high is gonna go to the green, and our yellow is gonna go to our, our low is gonna go to the white wire, just like that. So we got our taps on, now we just need to put them on the end of our wire. Easy as that, white to green, we got our orange to our white. Give you guys a nice kind of close up there so you can see. I cut it shorter because I didn't want all that slack in the engine bay. Back where we found it, battery negative. We'll just kind of I'll just shove it on here for now because I want to disconnect the power the moment those arms deploy so they don't come up on me when I'm trying to mount the... So if I take the positive under temporarily just to get power, just like that. And theoretically, if I open this door, there it came down. Or it should open. Perfect. Take the batteries right off. And now, because those are down, we can work on putting the running boards on. We want to put our carriage bolts on the running boards so we can mount it to our brackets. Two bolts per bracket. So all we want to do is just slide them in as such. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. And just like that. So they can't come out because they're... So we're going to keep two on this side, on the rear. And we're going to slide two all the way to the front there. Kind of just wing it here and line two up. Like, just like that. And then we'll get the other two lined up here. Perfect. It's gonna be a 10 mil, would be my guess, yeah. Classic. So I apologize, apparently my camera stopped recording, I didn't even realize. Um, but I got the positive and the negative hooked up, so nothing too crazy, like luckily I, I kind of caught in time, didn't really talk about much. Just finish up these two terminations here, so. Here's our negative and we have our two wires to the negative there as well as our two wires to the positive here. So all of our power is hooked up. We just got to tie up a few more things here. Uh, the only thing, and I did go ahead and I tightened uh, everything down, the running boards. I got them seated exactly how I want them. So I ended up having to shift them because once they came up, they kind of moved off of this line here. So once the running boards are up, then I brought them back to this line here, the, the body line, and then I tightened everything down. So it, there's a loop of wire that's just attached to this arm. This, you undo uh, this connection here, and you can see that this wire is already coming out the end here. So if you want, you can pull some slack back. And this guy actually gets plugged into our running board here. This wire that we pulled into our engine bay here gets plugged into this now. All we have to do now is just kind of clean up these wires here and everything is almost, it's basically done. We could turn it on and see how everything looks. All right, so I got everything tied up, everything tightened. I, I, I initially, if you remember, I left the brackets loose or snug because we thought we'd have to do some adjustments. I didn't have to, so those are all tightened up. The running boards are all tightened up and our wires are all cleaned up. So. There's a lot of wires in the engine bay. Uh, for now, I kind of just stuff them all behind here. I'll need to do something about it because it is a lot. Whether I do end up cutting some of these wires down and butt splicing them, we'll see. But for now, this will do. Coming underneath here, and running up here. And then I have, so my wires coming from my engine bay here and my wires coming from my lights and my motor here. I have everything nicely tie wrapped. And then I shoved everything into the C channel. Um, into the frame. So I shoved it all in there and I tie wrapped it all. At least it'll kind of stay somewhat protected in there and just kind of keeps the bird's nest out of the way and uh, just cleans everything up very nicely. It is out in the elements, I guess, to a, to a point, but it's nice, clean, and tidy in there. So I did the same thing here. Um, here's the wires coming from the engine bay. 
and I put everything into the into the hole going to the, the chassis basically and then the wires running out of it. So now the grand reveal. So let's put this bad boy down. We don't need it open any longer. So let's go ahead and we'll open the door and we'll show you guys how these deploy. You obviously saw the ambient light there stroke as I opened the door. And these feel great. They really do. They don't feel flimsy. I mean, I'm, I'm 190 pounds and, uh, and they feel great. They, they don't feel flimsy at all. I'm bouncing on it right now. And uh, I have absolutely no complaints in terms of that. Uh, overall, this is a great product, you guys. There's nothing cheap about it. There's nothing I saw while installing it that screamed cheap. Um, these are clearly a quality product. And I'm excited to see you know, how, how long they'll last, how they hold up to our winters here in Canada. And, uh, and yeah, very, very happy with them. Boost Audio guys did a very good job. And I will do a review video in a couple months uh, with a follow-up on how everything's kind of holding up. Let's get right into it, you guys. I'll show you some of the neat features with the uh, lights because you guys have all seen power running boards before. So I'll show you some of the ambient features that, uh, that they offer. So let's turn the lights off here so we can appreciate the nature of it. And uh, obviously you see, actually, you know what? I'll start off with, I'll show you kind of how the, So you obviously get your, you know, when you open your door, you see the stroke there. And then when you lock it, I'll turn all the lights off. And we'll turn the hazards on. So this is what it would look like if you were simulating a turn signal. Um, you get the kind of sequential sort of turn there. And I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks awesome. Um, I'm kind of excited to kind of, you know, be about in the streets using this. And, uh, and, it, and there's obviously safety features that, you know, that it brings, you know, people are, all, are gonna see you on the road. And, you know, you shouldn't be getting T-bone when you're making a turn or anything like that. But it's not everyone's flavor. You know, some people are gonna like that. It might be overkill for people. Um, but a very neat feature nonetheless. I really, really wish I would have gotten the rock light feature and I regret not getting it. So I'm gonna reach out to Boost Auto and uh, basically see if, if I tap into that white wire that we taped up on the harness, will that give me, you know, essentially rock lights. I'm, I'm curious to know if I put 12 volts to that, will that simulate <clears throat> the same as having that rock light effect? So I don't wanna just put 12 volts to it because I don't wanna blow anything up, uh, specifically that remote, that controller. So I'll, I'll message, reach out to them and I'll see if I can do that. And then I'll make another video of me hooking in the rock lights up to the upfitter switches on the Tremor. So the install on this wasn't that bad. It obviously took a while. It's nighttime out. I do things in between. You know, I got a kid and all that stuff. So it's not always like a fluid video through and through. I kind of pause, take a break here, then can continue. Um, if you're not filming and you're doing, you could probably have all this done in three or four hours. It's not too, too crazy. I hope this video helps you guys. I try my best to sort of answer questions that I know I would have probably have if a lot of people just fly through videos assuming that people know things. So I try my best just to get every little detail, even if it seems super obvious, just so there is no questions at the end of the day. If I did leave anything out, however, make sure you guys comment, ask, I will answer. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys subscribe, like, that all goes a long way. And uh, thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you in the next one.